brilliant people. So I've got my Christmas earrings on, uh, but this video is about the upcoming solstice and the, the energy of this upcoming solstice and what it means in the larger context. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing my Christmas earrings, but then, you know, there it's not a coincidence that Christmas and the solstice uh, always very close together because, of course, historically, uh, the Feast of Christmas was actually moved to coincide with the the solstice. But over the years, of course, the, the, you know, the solstice seems to have drifted a little. Anyway, um, so let's get started. So the, the energy of this solstice is particularly powerful and interesting partly because of the year that we've been through that has been so intense and solstices because it's kind of like um, just like when your computer uh, if it's mucking up the best thing you can do is turn it off and turn it on again and that resets everything uh, in many ways that is what the solstice is doing you know the 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 way this the earth orbits around the sun it reaches one end of the the orbit and uh, it, it starts to come back the other way. Now, of course, it looks like the sun has moved across the sky and pauses, that's the solstice, and is now coming back. But it's because, well, the orbit of the Earth is, is more elliptical, and so that's kind of what how it looks. So when we, we've got to one end of the ellipse, you know, the, the well, it seems to, as if the, the sun has sort of paused in moving backwards and forwards across the sky. So that's the solstice. So, and of course it marks the longest day and the shortest day, depending on which part of the earth you're, you happen to be on. This uh, December solstice, you know, winter solstice in the Northern hemisphere. So it's the shortest day, summer solstice in the Southern hemisphere. So it's, it's the longest day. Yeah, I really don't know for, for <laughs> uh, how, you know, if you think the earth is flat, I really don't know how you think the uh, the day can be short and long, you know, shortest and longest in different parts of the, the planet if the earth is flat. But anyway, that's getting off topic. So the energy of, of this solstice. Now, I'm not an astrologer. Obviously, I walk that fine line between, you know, intuition and creativity and science and, but, you know, for me, astrology, like a lot of, uh, if you like, story frameworks or a lot of understanding frameworks that persist, it obviously has things to offer. It helps us understand certain things in a, in a meaningful way. So if you want to understand more of the kind of planetary meaning, if, if that works for you, go and talk to your astrologer. But one of the interesting things that is happening astronomically, as well as astrologically, is that Saturn and Jupiter are sitting together in the sky. They're sort of like, oh, they almost look like they're having a hug because essentially even though obviously they're miles and miles apart because their orbits are very different. When we look up, they, they, they look like they're sitting kind of next to each other in the sky. And Saturn, you know, tends to carry the energy or the meaning of our life path. And Jupiter, for so much of our history as uh, humanity, interestingly, in many, many different cultures, Jupiter has always been the planet that seems to be connected with that of kingship, queenship, sovereignty. You know, in other words, so it's it's how we rule our own lives. So the fact that these two things are now lined up in the sky, it means that it is a moment in which we can consider the path that we are taking and also how we are going to rule our own life and you know our, therefore our influence on the world from now on now if you think about that and the current moment that we find ourselves in because we are going through times of tremendous transformation uh, and i believe and if you followed my work for a while you'll 
you'll understand that I perceive that the collective consciousness or you know humanity as a whole society is attempting to move from a codependent uh, structure where we examine everything from this right wrong perspective to an in more interdependent structure in which we are able to honor the difference of all things but also understand how all of those things fit together so there isn't right and wrong in that kind of way it's just that everything has a different context and so when we have that interdependent thinking we're operating more from integrity based thinking or purpose based thinking when i teach it i generally talk about systems thinking because your purpose or your integrity that is what you're constantly correcting towards so it's not that you're hung up about whether you're right or wrong whether you've made a mistake or not you're looking at well how do i keep correcting so i can take things in the direction i want to go in i suppose the COVID situation is a perfect example we didn't get it right to begin with you know the scientists didn't weren't completely clear on what they were looking at um, so that to begin with for a lot of people that was very confusing because you know do you wear masks do you not wear masks do you have to um, disinfect everything and then of course later on they found that well COVID doesn't necessarily really um, transmit on surfaces all that well but it does transmit through the air so you need to wear a mask but for a lot of people that was so confusing they kind of I guess they found it hard then to uh, do many of those things but we learn we get better that is systems thinking um, of course though when we get stuck in right wrong thinking we we look at what it is that we first thought was right and then we hang on to it regardless of what evidence comes along after so this moment this solstice which is about resetting things it's about enabling us to if you like re-establish the framework of our lives our life path saturn and how the principles by which we are going to walk that path jupiter now when you actually have a group going through a transformation if you've listened to if you're listening to this channel i'm assuming that there have been times that you have gone through a transformation and you understand how to begin with it can be very very uncomfortable because generally what happens is you start to be exposed to these new ideas and that can sometimes be unsettling but then as you start to become more comfortable with the new ideas you instead of getting what we you know what is increased variance instead of being able to understand that you have more options you start to what we call concentrate at the poles so you start to instead of having all these you know living on a whole spectrum you start to kind of like be the old version of yourself some days and then other days you're the new version of yourself and that kind of contrast in a way can work for us because it it helps us understand the choice that we're making when we are having this transformation and so that is kind of like the the period that we're sort of now entering into like over the last however many decades humanity as a whole has started to find increased variance with through the through the internet and global travel we've started to connect more to people who have different ways of life and different principles they've created a whole culture and society that you know work along different lines and they work so we are aware that there are so many more options in the way that we can create our society and because of that it's it's created all this well this whole spectrum and a bit of stress because if you are operating from right and wrong well then you don't quite know how to you know all these other options which you thought were wrong but clearly they're right for some people so how do you deal with that so that is the increased diversity the increased variance that we're seeing now after a while we do start to make choices and we start to go okay for me i want to live my life from a right wrong perspective 
and other people go well I want to live in this sort of systems thinking this this creative innovative expansive way that enables me to understand that maybe not everything is for me I don't have to do everything but the things that don't work for me may be working for other people and because of that you know it's interesting you know we, we find you know curiosity as kind of like our superpower because we we get to understand that in different contexts different things work just as brilliantly as certain things work in our own context okay so what does that mean so this solstice seems to be marking a moment in which the collective consciousness seems to be moving towards the two poles we're starting to get a concentration in the two poles so we the people who want to go back to the old right wrong way of thinking and the people who really want to commit to having this more interdependent systems thinking expansive way of life so that's kind of cool because it means that we're really starting to see uh, you know progress in this transformation but there is there is a kind of little danger in it because we want to be able to still maintain some process of moving from right wrong over towards this expansive way of thinking and that's that's our ability to develop systems thinking to understand that right wrong thinking isn't wrong right wrong thinking is brilliant it's what enables our left brain to go this bit of data is right that bit of data is wrong and that kind of thinking has got us to the technology to the level of abundance that we have right now that's brilliant but the problem is is that because now the world is so interconnected we need we need to understand that right wrong thinking while it will tell us all these particular data points are accurate it doesn't tell us how to connect up all the data points so that things really work so that we can connect them up in a way that achieves our purpose and that's what enables us to move from right wrong thinking to systems thinking which is also also the logic of our right brain or our intuition so now if you want to do that I mean you can of course um, <laughs> you can read my book the soul's brain but the other thing that you can do is you can just make one little shift you can go from asking yourself you know is this right to how is this right or you can go from asking can I do this to how can I do this because when we add the word how to the front of those sentences we're actually starting to look at not just the individual isolated bit of you know choice or bit of data we're looking at how it fits into everything so we're getting a sense of the larger system the larger pattern so when you are looking at this solstice whatever you're doing to mark it for yourself whether you're doing a, a meditation setting your intentions or just you know enjoying the energy of it and just noticing how these changes are moving through society uh, however you work with it what I would encourage you to do is to focus on those three things look at your life path look at uh, what principles you are going to choose to walk your life path with are you going to use those right wrong kind of thinking in order to try and figure out your path or are you going to start to shift into that more systems thinking which is more like I'm going to live my path so that every day I am more of who I really am living more in my joy every day because if you make that choice you're going to be brilliant.